Hey guys, this is Jim K and 4YCD and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to add a little bit of capability to this guy. This is a Kenwood TS570D and until recently this lived in the frozen wasteland of Wisconsin, also known as where temporarily offline stay at. Uh, this radio does not have a waterfall on it. That's a really cool capability that's on a lot of newer radios, Yesus and ICOMs. And it's on newer Kenwoods. This is not a new Kenwood by any stretch of the imagination. This is probably, I don't know, late 90s, early 2000s maybe. This is a great radio. This radio still works just fabulously. I've had it hooked up and, and made some QSOs on it. It's great. But it does not have waterfall, and it's a lot easier to look and search around for stuff with a waterfall, in my opinion. However, on this radio, it's going to be fairly easy to add that capability. So what we're going to do today, and I'll change cameras when we do it, is we're going to add on an, a connector. We've already, I've already made the cable. This is a little two-pin cable. Uh, this came on an antenna that came with one of my five or eight SDRs, and it was one of those little tiny SDR-style you know, magnetic antennas. And then I put a two-pin connector on that guy. On this Kenwood, there is a two-pin header in the radio on the bottom side of the radio inside where we can put, it, it's a direct connection to the IF of the radio. So what we can do is we can hook up this cable that I showed you to the radio and then run that out to our SDR dongle and then using just about any SDR software available, we can have our waterfall that's directly related to what we're tuning on the radio. So. Without further ado, let me switch camera views. Okay, so I've got the patient ready for surgery now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pop off the cover. There are actually two pieces to the cover on this, a top half and a bottom half. This is the bottom of the radio. And we have four screws, one at each corner that needs to come off. And then we have two on the side that need to come off and that will give us access to the IF. Okay, so we've got the back cover off the radio. And this radio, it's interesting, has an access panel that covers uh, about three-fourths of the inside of the radio, but it doesn't let us get access to this. So you actually have to take off the whole bottom cover, like I mentioned before. And then we have our cable here, which is our two-pin Molex connector. And then this is gonna go up here on CN3, which is that guy right there. And we're gonna make sure he's in there. You're looking at an overhead view. I'm looking at it from the side. <clears throat> and that looks good. So, <clears throat> now the only thing that leaves to be done here is to route the cable out of the radio. There is no easy way to do that because there's no connection, no firewall hole or anything like that to run the cable through. So you've got a couple options. Now what I'm going to do is zoom our camera back out a little bit. So. The cable has to come out. This is the back of the radio here. This is the front up here where these ribbon cables are. And there's a couple ways we could do this. I can drill a hole through this. I really don't want to do that because number one, drilling is going to leave metal shavings possibly. And I don't want metal shavings falling into the very nice Kenwood radio. Um, another option still drilling would be to drill out and wire a connector in here and shorten this shorten this cable up and just put an SMA bulkhead connector through it. And down the road, if I determine that I'm going to use this a lot, I may end up doing that. The thing you'd have to be super careful of doing that is you'll have to make sure to clean up very well. I would probably cover most of this back here with tape just to make sure that I don't get any aluminum shavings down into the radio -y bits uh, and screw it up. So our wire's in, <clears throat> I'm going to get this thing kind of put back together where we can operate it and we'll pull up a screen and see if we can get an IF interface and what that's going to look like. Okay, so <clears throat> I've got everything installed and this is on a Kenwood 570D which has a serial port on the back of it. Some radios may have a USB connection for cat control. This radio has a standard nine pin serial port and it has to be wired like a null modem. So to do this with this particular radio, I had to scrounge up a null modem adapter as well for the serial cable. Your mileage may vary on that. Other radios 
have different ways of doing this. So you've got to be able to tap the first IF on the radio. For example, on the 7610, it has a tap already on the IF with an SMA port out the back built in and has everything you need. On the Kenwood, obviously serial port for cat control, and then I have to tap the IF directly, and that's what we made the cable for and connected it up to the radio. On something like a 7300, an ICOM 7300, there's no easy way to tap it. There is a third-party board that's actually a drop-in replacement that makes the appropriate connections and, and allows you to tap off that IF to do this. The upside to doing this, and the reason you'd want to do this, is so now on this old radio, which like I said is a 570, it has no waterfall at all. But by doing this, I can see now the band that I'm looking at. And I've got the radio at the moment tuned to WWV on uh, 15 megahertz, and that was to get everything calibrated. One of the things you will need to do is you need to tune to a specific known frequency and calibrate everything so that where you're setting it matches where the actual frequency itself is. The other settings you need to know, and this is HDSDR, your mileage may vary for other things. Obviously, we're going to select our RTL. Uh, dongle and this is a standard generic 2832 SDR dongle these are visualization options we want to swap the I and Q channel so that upper side band is on the upper side and lower side band is on the lower side otherwise that'll be inverted that doesn't matter our RF front end configuration this is important so you need to know what the IF frequency is for your specific radio, and this will vary from radio to radio. On the 570, it's 7.305 megahertz. I've told SDR control that I have an SDR on the IF output of the radio, and then I have OmniRig installed, which allows me to have cat control. More on that in a minute. We've obviously set our IF frequency and these are some other options for doing different things, and none of those apply to what we're doing today. The next thing we want to look at after we've done that is any calibration settings that you may need to make. I've got DC removal enabled because we don't want that. This right here is where we set up OmniRig. OmniRig is a piece of middleware that goes between the SDR program and the radio to manage cat control between the two and synchronize everything. So if we jump into OmniRig real quick, you can actually control four separate rigs if you had them all hooked up. I've got it set to the Kenwood and our baud rate and signaling and everything for our rig control. So there's, there's multiple options for that. And again, your mileage may vary, but that's what we've got set up. And with that set up, what this lets us do, and this is important. Now here's the thing about OmniRig and rig control. The IF is only going to show you where it's tuned to on the radio. So without rig control, this screen here shows me signal. But this frequency does not sync and match with what's in the radio. So while I'm tuning the radio, say, to 15 megahertz, this can be all over the place, and I don't exactly know where 15 megahertz is by looking at just these peaks. With rig control in here, that makes it more useful because now this chunk of bandwidth that we're looking at here is going to be centered on where we have the radio physically tuned to. So that makes this more useful for looking at signals. So let's jump down uh, into the 20 meter band. And you can see now we've got a lot of things that look like signals. <clears throat> and I'm not going to play any audio because it's just audio, but I can come over here and, and hover on that signal, jump to it, and then I can tweak the frequency here to get it lined up so that it's in, in tune relative to that signal. And again, without the rig control, I would just be presented with this, and these peaks would not tie in with the actual frequencies here. So HDSDR also puts a marker up over the different ham bands. And I can change that here. So if I want to change bands from 20 meters to 17 meters, I can. 
and then here is presented the 17 meter band, this green bar atop the frequencies. So that's pretty cool. And what this can do for you is while I'm on the radio on one frequency, maybe listening or, or having a QSO, I can also see where there's other traffic at. I can see where all the traffic is and then jump to it when I'm done with my QSO down here. Just by double clicking on this thing, that changes my radio and moves my tune to match this. So if I had the radio up on camera, which I don't, it's right over here next to the screen, <clears throat> it also jumped to 18063 as soon as I double click that. And the beauty of this is also I can tune the radio and that updates what's showing on the screen. So that's going to be it for this video. I wanted to share that with you guys. Almost every radio, let me take that back, every radio does have an IF and how easy it is to tap kind of depends on the radio. Um, as I said, on the Kenwood, like I showed you, a header, um, and if you look in the Kenwood documentation, it's clearly marked CN3 is the IF. So it was just a simple matter of making a cable to connect out to an SDR. And you can use any SDR with this. It doesn't have to be an RSP1A or an expensive SDR. It can be one of these cheap $25, $30 ones off of Amazon. Um, it, either way will work just fine. So that's pretty cool. What radio you have just depends on how easy it is to get to the IF. Um, your mileage will vary on that as well. On this one, no soldering was required short of making the cable. It was just a matter of plugging it into the radio. The hardest part of using this one is going to be routing the cable out of the case in some way. And right now I just have it going under the bottom of the radio and it's not kind of permanent at this point, but it does work. Guys, that's it for this video. Hope you got something out of that. If you would, give me a big thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post any new content. Thanks, y'all. 73.